I'm an archaeologist. Uh, I study textile production uh, in southern Italy, even if I'm moving now to central Italy to some new. Um, and uh, um, in, in the first millennium BC, mainly from the ninth century till the, till the Roman Republican period, the end of the Roman Republican period. Uh, I'm also an, an archaeologist, I mean, not only a textile archaeologist, because I have my excavation in southern Italy, I, I study uh, funerary practice. This is uh, I am social changes and other things uh, in the societies of southern Italy because I um, I have taught in lecture uh, from uh, uh, 2015 till last year I taught uh, uh, archaeology of Magna Grecia and Greek and uh, um, Greek art and archaeology and now I'm teaching uh, um, uh, archaeology of the Italic population so of the um, uh, indigenous population of, of, um, of Italy. And uh, uh, um, I want to speak about some case studies because I, I studied a lot of sites uh, in the south of Italy. Uh, I find, I find, I usually find the uh, Iron Age sites really more and more interesting because um, uh, we can know a lot of data about the indigenous population before the arrival of the Greeks and, and how uh, these, uh, uh, the arrival of the Greek population changed also textile production and textile technology. Um, uh, my PhD uh, thesis in 2013 was about uh, uh, the, the Gulf of Taranto, so the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the Ionic uh, area of, uh, of Italy, of southern Italy, and it was about um, textile production in, uh, in, in terms of economy uh, of the area. Uh, while uh, I, I began studying uh, gender, age, and status because I study a lot of uh, burials, and I find both uh, 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 textile tools and textiles, and so I have a lot of. Uh, uh, I, I, I still have a lot of uh, uh, questions, um, and some of them I I, I I will speak about some of them with you. I, and according to um, <clears throat> according to iconography. Uh, we have in, in Italy in general, not just in southern Italy, because the Rucchio is, is in central northern Italy. Um, textile production was uh, a, a women uh, activity. We have some uh, representation, for example, uh, here in the Rucchio or in Bologna, we have this thing in Nabulum. It's, it's amazing because we can see all the process, the production process. Uh, from the beginning till the till, till the end, and but also in southern Italy, Daunia is in uh, uh, in southern Italy in the northern uh, Apulian region. In this in this population, uh, we can see women. Uh, we can see they have uh, a, a bird or a, an amphora. It is the characteristic of the the women in that society. Uh, but if it can be for the uh, for the uh, mainly for Iron Age when we have a household production more than a specialized production, uh, it's not always true. Uh, in, I want to speak about some case studies. In Coronata is, is a very important site because you can see Metaponto, Taranto, Siris, and Sibari are Greek towns. And in Coronata is a settlement that was destroyed when Metaponto, the Greek town of Metaponto was, uh, was built. So it's very important to see how indigenous population, what, what was the, uh, the, the production of indigenous population in that area. 
uh, we have uh, in, in some variants we have both loom weights and spindle walls and also textiles so it's definitely important to analyze them uh, the, the some questions i have for example i don't have an answer uh, for example all the uh, the oh, the only decoration on the loom weight is this one with a line of chevron so um why do uh, all of them have the same decoration? Is it the decoration is the decoration a, a symbol of, of, of a village? I don't know, or of a status. I, I have a lot of questions about this site because, for example, just the, the three percent of the, the burials have uh, textile tools inside. So uh, it should be a very specialized production, a very specialized. Um, um, a very specialized um, uh, work. Uh, also, for example, I have some barriers with just spindle walls, some barriers with just loom weights, other with decorated and non decorated loom weights, and just three or four barriers on uh, 630 with both uh, spindle walls and loom weights, decorated and undecorated. So, why there is this? this differentiation uh, it depends on the status again or it, it depends on the, the age uh, so I have a lot of, of questions about this necropolis this is the, the only decoration I have and only in one loom there is this uh, labyrinth decoration and this labyrinth decoration is common in another area in Calabria Francavilla Maritima in southern Calabria so maybe this woman went to in Coronata village is it possible? Uh, is it where the decorated weight part of the uh, wedding trousseau? I have a lot of questions about gender, age, uh, and status, for example, from this necropolis. And this is important because I have also textiles, they're very fine textiles. You can see this twill, two, two, twill uh, here. Um, it's a, a, an Eribon twill. Uh, you can see the technical details. Uh, um, and uh, it, what is interesting is that it had to be the garment of the dead uh, because it, it, it's on the back of, of the fibula. On the front of the fibula, there was uh, the, a tabby, a simple tabby, maybe the, uh, uh, the, um, um, Sorry, the the, um, uh, the 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 sudarium. The um, I don't, I'm not sorry, I do not remember the English name. Um, and there was there is also a fur, a sheep fur. So maybe uh, we we are starting to to know how women were dressed when. Uh, inside the burials, because and uh, the, the the same um, the same tabby um, uh, tabby fabric is also uh, from other tombs, uh, five or six tombs. We are in the the first half of the 8th century BC, uh, so that's why it's a very important chronological horizon because we don't have Greek population yet. Um, but also this it will demonstrate how uh, the textile how women knew uh, textile technology what they could produce and it's important because we have uh, tools in uh, in switzerland in austria in, in spain but we don't have tools in greece so even if this area of southern italy is so close to greece to greece maybe textile textile culture is totally different Maybe through Apennines, the, the, the mountains in the, of the, the central Italy. Uh, they, of course, this is the, the view with the, uh, with the sun and electron microscope. The, the, in this case, uh, uh, we have wool, just wool. In two cases, we have flax. Um, Another another question I have is about status. Uh, I study, uh, I told you, from the Iron Age till the Roman arrival. So another important site is Taranto. Taranto is 
very well known for textile production because according to Greek, uh, to Greek sources and to Latin sources, they produce wonderful textiles and they produce shellfish purple dye. We have scraps or murexes. Uh, we have the, the murex on a coin. These are towns of Southern Italy. Yes, they are in Sicily, but they are, they, they are Punic. The Taranto is the only Greek town with the murex on a coin. So it has to be a, it has to be a very important production activity. And also uh, after a workshop I, I did in Lecce in Staten uh, 13, I, if I don't, if I remember, um, uh, I also do uh, some experimental archeology span with um, shellfish purple uh, dye. Uh, and also from Taranto, we have gold fibers. You can see this is pure gold. Uh, and you can see how thin are these threads. Uh, 65 uh, microns. Uh, so you can imagine this, this is from, uh, these are from some burials of the third, second century BC from Taranto and from Canosa as well, another town in, uh, in Italy, very well known for textile production. Uh, and you can see how fine could be, uh, uh, what could be the, the, the status of the, of the dead in this case. Um, also, uh, other problems I have about gender is, are related, related again in this area. This was about my thesis. Uh, I studied this area with these sites. And we have, here we have, blue weights with male and female names. Here, I tried to reconstruct uh, the, the textile production of the area because I had thousands and thousands of blue weights. And uh, for example, I imagined there, there were also more, there was also more than one loom inside houses. So I imagined that they could weave uh, for um, selling products. Uh, the, the, the textile production was standardized. Uh, and it's uh, very important to find male and female names on, uh, on loom weights because, of, of course, they are Greek because it was a Greek town. But it's important because uh, both genders were involved in textile production. So um, these are examples of what I, I study in southern Italy. Thank you.